Hey, so hello. <clears throat> I recently had an issue with my Blue Yeti mic, and after doing some research, it almost 9 times out of 10 seems like the problem is the USB connector becomes either um, flexed out or it come, becomes desoldered. So in order to fix this, the first step is to take your microphone apart, which actually is not as self-explanatory as it seems. <clears throat> you want to unscrew the side mounts. Should we keep these off to the side so we don't lose them? And there's also a rubber gasket on the inside of these plastic um, little spacers. So just make sure those don't fall out. And then up until this point, still pretty straightforward, we're going to need screwdrivers. And it is a Phillips head and you're going to unscrew this screw, this screw, now I'm looking at this camera backwards, and then inside of here there's this another rubber gasket that you need to pry out because there's another screw in there. So I just use a small little uh, flathead screwdriver to pop that out. That piece comes out and then we unscrew. And once we get these undone, we can let those drop. <clears throat> it's pretty much completely released. Now what keeps it in the body here are the buttons. So we actually just need to pull these off. This bigger volume one's pretty easy to do with your hand. I say that now I can't do it. Um, I actually used a towel, wrapped the towel around it and then pulled it out with a plier. I'm going to do this off camera with my teeth actually real quick. But they're just friction fit onto their posts. And then you have the little mute light and that can come out the front. Once you do that, the body slips off and we can get to what is probably the cause of your problem here. And it's this USB jack. I would say the first step, uh, the first thing to try doing is taking a little needle, needle nose pliers and squeezing in the sides a little bit and then re-inputting your USB power cord to see if that works. Sometimes they just become a little distressed and you can't get good contact. If that doesn't work, then what you're gonna have to do is remove the solder and remove this piece and get a replacement. Okay, so I tried the pinching the USB port method and it didn't work. So the assumption was that the whole thing was broken. Turns out that is true. I got it to work here. Um, but I had to kind of self-teach myself how to solder. That's why those probably look really crummy. But for those of you just starting out, um, if you if you want to do this on your own, all you need to do is get a really cheap soldering iron uh, kit, preferably, so that you get a few extra tools with it. One being the solder sucker, which I didn't even know what this thing was for until I started watching some videos. And then some soldering paste as well. What you're going to do, and what I didn't do properly, was um, put the solder paste onto the, the four big terminals here, or not terminals, but four connectors here that make a square, and then the five little ones, I don't know why it's not focusing, that are between the top two um, solder joints. What you're going to do is you're going to heat up your soldering iron, place it on the the solder that will have the flux over it hopefully just to kind of dissipate the heat so you don't burn the board up which I did a tiny bit. You're going to depress this little plunger. Once you get it liquefied you want to try to push the knot, the, the white portion of this over top of that ball of molten uh, solder as well as you can and then push the button 
and it should suck it out. You may have to do that a few times because it's hard to get kind of both hands coordinated on that uh, on that wet solder. But that's what you'll do. You'll remove all the solder, um, putting a little pressure with the soldering iron as you go to try to drop the pins through. And once you've done all that, this whole unit here, I don't know why it's not focusing here, should drop off the board. Like I said, you might have to do um, maybe a little pressing with a, a tweezers or something once you get all that solder gone. Then you have to purchase, these are really cheap, but uh, these USB adapters that match that type. Here's the air I made that hopefully you don't make. I bought this type here, which uh, again, it's not focusing well. I think this is for a surface mounted board because nothing sticks up. It's perfectly flat. You need to buy the ones that have the little prongs that stick up. And they'll have five little prongs between the two top portions. You're going to slide that in and the friction from that should hold it in place by itself so that you can go back and reverse the process. You'll go in and put your flux on top with, you know, like just a little um, screwdriver or some sort of metal tip. You'll just rub the tops of those prongs with the flux. And then that will help when you solder with your little cheap kit soldering um, just to press and heat up that little metal tip and let the, the solder ooze over top of it. If you've put enough flux on there, it should just automatically pull, pull up in a little ball on top of each one of those little metal connectors. But the key part, so I actually did that, still didn't work, was wondering what happened. These five little pins, you have to be really sensitive around because if they touch each other, you'll do what's called bridging the uh, terminals and then it won't work. So you need to make sure each one is distinctly its own solder joint. And so on these little ones, what I found the, the best course of action was to get the, the solder hot and then kind of like just lightly drag the soldering iron back to try to pull any excess away from it that will cool off quickly and then separate from the other ones. That took a lot of playing around with, but it's it's easy enough to do once you play around with it. Just don't hold the soldering iron on, on there for too long to the point where like the, the green board gets browned or burnt up a little bit. But so I did all this and then I got a plug of that charger type. Let me see if I can find it here. Looks like I already connected it to my computer. So let me unplug it. I'll plug it into a wall outlet. Just to show you that that light now lights up. That was not happening before. So now at least the LED is getting power, so I'm making the assumption that the whole thing works. I'm gonna do a, a audio check with this though later in the video just to prove that it does work. So this seems to be the culprit of most malfunctions on these mics. You can do this yourself for sure by getting a cheap kit. I'll put the part numbers for the correct USB port and then also for the soldering iron kit that I used that had all the pieces that you need. I think tops, the soldering iron kit was like $15, $16, and I've already used this for like a lot of other projects. You can do it for like wood burning to like put little insignias and stuff on wood. There's a lot of different things you can do with the soldering iron besides just soldering. Um, so it's worth having in the house regardless. So um, these pieces from what I recall were like a couple of bucks, but you had to buy five at a time. If you were going to put in an order for other pieces or something, you could probably get these for a few, few cents, maybe a quarter or something. But I'll put those links in the description of the video after the audio test of the microphone once it's put back together. This is me testing my newly fixed Blue Yeti mic. My settings are the gain is at the far left and the setting on the lower knob is to the circle icon and then the volume on the front is roughly in the middle. And I'm recording to Audacity. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope this helped.